All right, in the interest of full disclosure, um, this is wrong. <laughs> so what happened was I imported my design. I, I cut through everything that looked good, did quick measurements, but the fact is it's off an eighth of an inch in every direction. The reason being the last, the last cutter you use remains in the system. And the last cutter I used was eighth inch. I loaded my design. I'm using a quarter inch cutter that uh, the machine thinks I'm using an eighth inch cutter. And uh, you you understand now why this is larger than well, needs to I be. I will get this correct. And, I, and, and the other thing I'm going to do is I notice when I'm cutting through this, you know, you got to make about four passes in my book to get through. That's that's hard on the cutter and it's hard on the router. So I'm going to uh, just make a skim pass a thousand a hundred thousands deep and use that as my outline, drill some holes and then jigsaw out the waste as close to the line as I can. Okay, so here's how I created these pockets. And basically what you want to do is have your quarter inch cutter fall along the it's gonna fall along the outside of the line come to this uh, corner and uh, uh, this rectangle basically and fall into it uh, follow the back line for just a few hundred thousands not a hundred uh, tens of thousands and then come back out uh, along this short line follow the uh, side line there and then do the same thing on, on all the other three corners so I kind of just experimented around and what I found was I'd used um, the cutter is 0.25. I used a square that's uh, 0.26. Cut it in half basically, or actually rotated the, the square 45 degrees. Cut it in half and then basically welded it in each of these corners to give me the look I have here. So I'm going to find out how smart I am, but when I do the when I do the um, air cut it drops in there and it'll leave me a relief corner there so that uh, my wasteboard can have square corners and drop into this pocket now you can see I basically what I've done is create an outline of my of my opening I'm gonna run my jigsaw along this right down the center and now you can also see these little dog ears out here but that'll give me that relief that I want so it looks pretty good so I'm uh, I'm excited about this one because mainly because it's right. <laughs> so, uh, all right, it's amazing what happens when you have the tool set up correctly. Now I'm at three inches, which is what I want, and I'm at three quarter, which is what I want, and I've got the relief in the corner. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. So now you can see I've got a square. I, I've got the ability to put a square edge in here because I've got that relief. All right, I got my spoil board made. Actually, I got four of them made. Um, three quarter by 17 by inch and a quarter. And the reason for the inch and a quarter is on the back side and you can see I wrote the dimensions on my spoil board here I'm going to take a piece of half inch material the same as this this is three quarter and you can see that it's just a little bit proud which is what I want I want this to register a little below the machining surface because you don't want this uh, causing any, you any trouble. It's not a two-piece operation, it's just a one-piece. I don't know what I was thinking there. So I just rabbited these these uh, pieces of Baltic birch. Left this one long just because I could. So I'll screw them in place at these locations. Then we'll flip it over and see how she looks. These will have to be uh, countersunk. Okay, so I'm installing these brackets and I'm 
Uh, you can just see I just cut a rabbit here. Uh, and when I lay them down, I can see just a little bit of daylight there, which is what I want. But if I need to take them off again, I'm using screws, so I can do that. Just putting a shim in here so that there, there's clearance when this thing comes through, that it's not going to hit that. And then screwing it in place. That might have to be countersunk a little bit more. back one first. That's better. Okay, top side, you can see I'm just this is kind of, this is flush right there, but the two edges are below the surface, which is good. This I don't mind. That's a little bit below too. So that's the top side, uh, and the way that you would uh, register this to the extrusion, I would I'm I'm going to use my other one over there. Is, but you just put your workpiece in there, bring this up to it, and then uh, you'd be good to go. You know to make sure everything is. Flush here. So on the back side, you can see these brackets here. Uh, they worked out really nice. And just push the board down till till it stops on there. I don't know that I'm going to need to, uh, you know, have any way of, you know, like a couple screws or anything to hold this in place. I don't think that's going to be necessary. And then the same same thickness piece as these three in the back, and that's what I'll clamp it to my um, work table to. All right, so now you can see why I've got these uh, two slots here. It's high, I can go high and low, uh, regardless of the thickness of the workpiece, because these can slide by each other. So clamping this this wide piece against this ensures me that this is going to be registered. To my spoil board. So I just drop this in, bring it up flush, take my clamps in the back here, see, make sure we can see what's going on here. And all I'm going to do here is just give it uh, one, one little click. No. That's good. Just check it to make sure it's flush. And then a couple more. And now we're registered. All right, my first tenon, I'm gonna keep this simple. I've just got a 3 8 by inch and a quarter tenon um, on a, just a scrap board. It's, it's a straight on one end and uh, square here, but I didn't bother to even to do the rest of it. So let's just see what happens here. I've already placed the tenon with my grid and I've um, set this up for an eighth inch depth of cut. And then I've got to see uh, what I need to do as far as uh, removing the rest of the material. Let's just see what happens here.
and that looks perfectly centered but now I've got to remove the rest of this material to that exact depth I'm just I'm not even getting into my spoil board there it's right on the edge where it should be um, this is a 3 8 tenon on a 7 8 inch wide board so quarter and quarter plus 3 8 and 7 8 so you can see that it did a good job of centering it up using the grid system okay uh, quite honestly I didn't care where I placed this but I just put it on my board I was able to cut it as you can see I cut it uh, 50 thousandths deeper than the mortise or the tenon and um, no no offset so I wanted a friction fit so let's just see how this fits uh, there was something else oh uh, I went to cut this the first time and I'm looking at my image it won't allow me to do it I put it on inside cut and the reason was I still had my uh, offset set on there for um, half an inch so there, it, it just wouldn't work so when it finally when it finally dawned on me what I was doing wrong by uh, it, it let me cut it so let's just see what kind of fit we have here that's beautiful That is beautiful. So my first mortise and tenon with this router. <laughs> Not my first ever, but uh, that's a nice fit. beautiful fit okay one last thought on this uh, jig for cutting tenons uh, when I set this up I set it up with my tri-square here um, so that the piece ended up square to the table and uh, was one inch off of the off of the opening here so I so I had room for the cutter to cut the outside without ruining this now if you were doing this uh, multiple times, you know, a lot of times in woodworking, you're not just cutting one piece. So you want to, you, I wouldn't want to have to set up every piece like this. So what I was remiss in doing was uh, having some kind of a registration block down here. And that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to bring this in. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, butt it up against my piece, clamp it. In the back here like so I don't know if you can see that or not let me just show you here so I can I can clamp that now in place and from, from there on out any any piece that I did all I would have to do would be to just bring it in, flush it up, and clamp it. And I would be able to repeat, repeat, repeat every uh, tenon as long as my work pieces were the same. Whether I wanted it centered, offset, whatever. You know, you could you you would be able to register that um, cut every single time without having to you know go through the process of squaring it up with the with the tri square, locating the grid, placing the artwork. You could just go go go. You know that that's the whoop. That's the long. A short version of that story so the other part of this is though when you look at this a little closer here you see that this 
piece is now just three quarters of an inch below the the cut surface here and if if this tenon gets any lower than three quarters of an inch which I uh, would probably plan on doing in the future you're gonna run into this piece of ply now that's no big deal I can just leave that alone until it's uh, you know time to uh, to cut it away basically which I probably will end up doing that just leaving it be but this needs to be this corner needs to be square so that when I butt it up against the table the bottom of the table that that it provides that square reference surface that you need or a reference line I guess too so that's it I, I know that this piece is square I'll put a square mark on here I'll write on this piece of ply that it's for this jig and uh, I'll be good to go so I'm happy with the way this turned out it's uh, it's very small and I'm, I'll be able to what I'm going to do is just uh, put a couple screws in the wall and maybe drill a couple holes here mount it and uh, I'll always be able to just pull it off and go to work with it so I've got this I've got these are, are my spare backer boards and then the only part of the the only other part of the jig is sorry is my right angle clamp board here where I'll make this square corner up here so that's it thanks for watching